right now, one of the topics that I think is is relevant, or we've we actually heard it today, well, yesterday. Within the last two days, yeah. The last two days, and then also it came up a few weeks ago, is about appraisals. Mm -hmm. So appraisals are going to be a hot topic, I, I would say, for the next year at least, because just in Arlington alone, the sales price in September 2021 has decreased 12% from September 2020. So that means that we have individuals who thought their house was worth 12% more than they're getting now and they're starting to sell and what does that mean for buyers well that means that you're going to be putting offers on properties where the list price may be high for your liking and mm -hmm. what does that mean well the main thing that means is that the appraisal is going to come into play here much more it's going to be a bigger contender i, I think mm -hmm. coming up than in previous well really just in a the few recent months ago. well in the recent past is what right. we're really seeing um because earlier this year we felt that everything was appraising right everything that's was the impression appraising. we got we felt like everything was appraising um and slowly over the last few months as things have started to slow down a little bit, I guess you would say that that's may maybe not the case anymore. Yeah, I would say that that's not the case. Well, as as the market slows down, prices are not appreciating like they were last year because prices aren't appreciating as much. And, and this is the thing with, when you're working with sellers, <laughs> most sellers have an idea of when they're going to be selling their properties. And so they project into the future based on today's average sales price. Like right now we have clients that are getting ready for spring, summer, 2022 sales, right? They're, they're getting to either relocate out of the area or downsize, upsize, mm -hmm. what have you. Those particular clients are looking at today's sales prices and saying, okay, great. If I'm selling next year, then I'm going to have X amount of uh, percent increase mm -hmm. in my sales price, right? Well, with the Arlington numbers, we'll see that the Arlington numbers are not stagnant, but there, there really is really not much movement in the sales price. So if you thought that your property was worth more, then you're gonna put your house on the market for more. Mm -hmm. There's still low inventory right now. So that means that the properties that are coming on the market are still going to be getting offers on them. Maybe just not as quickly as 60 days ago. So what happens? What happens if you put a house on the contract? It's the list price, right? Or it's, the, it's what the, the seller wanted to get for the property mm -hmm. or what the agent, the listing agent put the house on the market for. What happens if the appraisal comes in and it's too low? Well, before we talk about what happens after there's a low appraisal, let's just kind of dispel any myths out there right now about what the purpose of the appraisal is. Some buyers, and I, I've had this come across with our clients as well, where they believe that the home buyers believe that the appraisal is there to protect them. Or right? they think it's how much the house is worth. Right. Or they think it's how, how much the house <laughs> is worth. And both of those assumptions are incorrect. The, the appraisal is not there to protect you. It's not proof of what your home is worth. It's not proof of what your home is worth. Mm -hmm. And the best thing to, I guess, describe this or kind of dispel this myth is to understand how an appraisal even works. What you have is you have a human, a, a regular person human. Sometimes it's actually uh, because we, we have a, a deal on the contract right now that we close tomorrow where it's just an automated system, right? Yeah. So there's two types of appraisal. There's an automated version where based on what the sale, if there's a lot of sales in a particular market, a computer or they have a computer. Yeah, they waved it and did like computer generated. Yes, right? it's computer generated. Yeah. Yep. But most often we see this other kind. The mo most often we see one where uh, individual a, a licensed appraiser. Yes, a human, a regular human feet, toes, arms, legs, everything, mm. right? This person comes into the property and they walk the property, they evaluate, they do a visual inspection of the property, and then they go back to their computers and they figure out, right, based on what has sold in the market, and they compare the subject property, so the property that the property- That the, the client has on the contract. The, yes, that's called the subject property, and they look for something called comparables or comps, right? Well, those comps, if those comps, if the prices are starting to decrease, then the appraisal is gonna come in low. It could, yeah. it could, and they're subjective. And that's what we always they tell clients subjective. is that appraisals are subjective. So it really just depends on, there's no science to it. So it depends on who the appraiser is because you can get, you know, Ryan one day, you might get Jonathan at the house a few doors down and both of them may look at the same information and come up with different numbers. Exactly, exactly. Um, and so that's why it's not a science. It's not a science. It's just like when you come up with a list price with a client of ours, we provide them with the comps. Yes. And those comps, are usually gonna be, there's gonna be a range and then our clients, you may tell them, I'm thinking between this number and this number. Right. And typically the client is gonna say, well, I wanna come up with $10,000 more than that. Right, yes. or whatever. 
Oftentimes, yes. Oftentimes, right? So that's objective. And then you put the house on the market and you see how it goes. And so with the appraiser, this is one person's opinion, but it's the opinion that probably matters most because it's the opinion that the bank is, is looking at. Yes, and the bank is going to try to protect themselves with these appraisals. So when we do get an appraisal and if it is low, then that is really a signal for the bank that this is too much risk for them, right? Mm -hmm. It's too much risk for them. Now, this isn't to say that the home isn't worth the appraised value. So we have to or separate- the sales contract, the contracted yes, value. Yes. So we have to, you have to separate appraisal, right? The appraised value and what the property is worth because what the property is worth is also subjective mm -hmm. to you. The buyer. This, one person too, just one person. So if you're using a conventional loan, not a government backed loan, then usually you have some options. So what are those options? So in a, in the scenario, when a appraisal comes in low, you have three options. You can proceed and bring the difference to the table, or you can go back to the seller and renegotiate. Perhaps the seller will meet you in the middle or, you know, they'll cover the difference and reduce the sales price. And then finally you can walk away. If you can't come to terms with the, with the seller, then you may just end up voiding that contract. Gotcha. If the appraisal comes in low, you can actually contest the appraisal. Now that's very challenging to do and usually it never works, but that is the option that I was thinking. It is an option and it may be an option because we actually, this is years ago, it's been years since we actually had a low appraisal come in for a seller, but we had one a few years ago and we offered to provide comps and everything and the buyer actually said that they were not interested in us. Oh investing. yes, I do remember that. Um, I do recall that, yes. We were representing the seller in that scenario. Yes, yeah, so that, that's an option before you get to the three options that, that Crystal had mentioned. But again, this is one of those scenarios though where if the seller, if the house is if the house is on the market and everyone, right, the, the, the listing agent, the buyer's agent, the buyer believes that the property is worth the price that the buyer is paying, then the appraisal is really just one opinion. Now, that opinion holds a lot of weight, especially if you don't have that much money to bring to the table. Absolutely. That's really when the appraisal really becomes a sticky subject because if you don't have any cash to bring to the table and then the seller is not interested in reducing that sales price or meeting you somewhere in the middle that's when that praise value becomes a sticky subject and no one wants to be in a position to where either they're bringing additional cash to the table or for the seller, the seller is losing money. That right, they anticipated. Yes. Yeah, you know, I was expecting to get X, Y, Z at the closing table and now you're telling me I'm gonna get so much less. So with appraisals, we should see more and more conversations about low appraisals as the market starts to cool off and people start to just do normal things like think about the purchase, right? Just think about your home purchase. Mm -hmm. As we start to see people just take their time to buy property. To buy a property, yes, because we've been in a place where you've seen a house and you made a decision that day. Like yes. you saw a house Sunday house, like, and you know, the on, the, on, yeah. the, on the drive back, Abraham's getting a phone call, we wanna Ooh. make an offer, right? Yes. And so these, you're talking about a market where you don't have time to sleep on it and a market where, because perhaps we've had clients, so you're losing out on properties. Right. So now you're being more aggressive. Yes. And so because of that aggression, whether it be through escalation clause or just coming in full price on a property that the comps don't support the list price. Exactly. exactly. So I think that buyers will have to get out of that frame, that uh, frame of mind, which is hurry and hustle, yes. which is the mindset they've been in if they've lost some properties. Whereas maybe we won't have that issue with new buyers, but if, if you have a buyer who's been in the market for a little while, they may be, you know, ready to act and maybe a little bit more cavalier. I think that the type of buyer will determine what happens with the property, right? So some of our clients, they they like to take risk, right? They go to casinos. <laughs> they, you always they, ask, uh, are you risk averse? Right. Yeah. You, if you're risk adverse, then this new market that we're in right now is going to be to your liking, right? Days on market are starting to increase, which the numbers show. And you're going to appreciate the fact that you're able to take some time to look at properties. But in the spring, Spring, right in the spring, especially in the, the Northern Virginia area, springtime, buying a house in the springtime is usually hectic. You may be buying a house that is quote unquote over the appraised value. But just remember appraised value doesn't mean worth, right? It just means that the bank doesn't support that number and you'll have to come up with some difference. Whew. If you're watching this still, uh, let us know <laughs> in the chat. Let us know in the chat if you paid over appraised value or if you'll never if you'll never pay over appraised value, I would love to hear your thoughts about that. What do you think is the problem with paying over the appraised value? Do you see the appraised value as 
the true value of the property? If so, why? Let us know in the chat below. My name is Abraham Walker and this is Crystal Walker and we make up the Ask A Walker team. You're watching this, this video on the Where to Live in Northern Virginia channel. We are YouTubers, we're YouTube real estate YouTuber. agents. We're almost to a thousand subscribers too. If you want to get in touch with us for either a perfect home questionnaire where we talk about your options of moving to the area or moving around the area, there is a link in the description. Click the link, fill out the form, and we will schedule a time to do a Zoom session with you to talk about all of your needs. My phone number or the company's phone number is right down here as well. Phone number and email address mm -hmm. is down here as well if you need to get immediate access to us. Tune in next week. Same city of Alexandria. City of Alexandria. We're covering City of Alexandria next week, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday. That's correct. Wednesday. Yeah. Peace.